Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory right now. Another day to always magnify and shout out his holy name right now. Another day to always praise and worship him right now. Another day to always put your faith, your trust, and your hope in Jesus. Because he is king of kings. And he is Lord of lords. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too difficult for him. Please, my sisters. Please, my brothers. Stop trying to figure out how it's all going to come together. Stop. Stop. Please trying to figure out how it's all going to work out. And it's believed that Jesus has already done it. Just know that it's already done. Just know it's already accomplished. Even though you don't even say how. Just believe in him. Just trust in him. Because faith without being tested. It holds no weight. There's no pain. Without victory. There's no suffering. Without glory. God will never allow you to go through what you're going through. If there's no way out. He loves you too much my sisters. He loves you too much, my brother, to sit there and have you to wait on something if it's not part of his will in the first place. I'm just keeping it real with you. I'm just being honest with you because we serve a loving God. We serve an amazing God. We serve an on-time God. We serve a miracle God, a healer God, a promising God, a big God. And it's not too hard, not too difficult for him. There's nothing that he can't overcome. There's nothing that he can't overturn. There's nothing that he can't even work out for you, my sisters and brothers. I mean, absolutely nothing. The only thing that you have to do is give it to God. Why are you still holding on to something when he is telling you to give it to me? The only thing that you're doing is beating yourself up. The only thing that you're doing is wearing yourself out. The only thing that you're doing is stressing yourself out. And all you got to say, here, God, I got to give it to you now. I'm tired of holding on. I'm tired of holding on. How much longer, my sisters, how much longer, my brothers, are you going to allow yourself to go through what you are going through? And all you got to do is give it to God right now today. Are you willing to give it to him right now? And as you give it to him, Say, thank you, Jesus, for working out working out for me. Thank you, Jesus, for handling this problem for me. And by the midst of all that, praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. He is still listening to your prayers. And answering them too. On his time. And if you're in love. I mean truly in love with Jesus. Open up your mouth right now today. And give him a shout out of praise. Give him a shout out of glory. Amen. Amen. Because God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good, and he is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I got a love letter that I want to present to my Heavenly Father God. I don't know about you, my sisters. I don't know about you, my brothers, but I have a love letter that I want to present to my Heavenly Father God. And the love letter I have that I want to present to him just to let him know from the bottom of my heart how thankful I am right now today. How thankful for what he has done and what he is doing in your life, my sisters, in your life, my brothers, and also my life. And if you have a love letter, please present your love letter to Jesus right now. Amen. 
Amen. Heavenly Father God, I just want to let you know how thankful I am because I'm so thankful today, Father God, that you woke me up this morning, God, that you woke my brothers up, that you woke my sisters up this morning. Father God, I am so thankful. I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, because you breathe life inside of us. You bless us with our health and our strength today, Father God. Bless you, dear Jesus. Father God, I'm so thankful that I was able to go in my prayer room and just kneel down, kneel down before the throne this morning and just pray and worship to you. Father God, I'm so thankful right now today, Father God, that I was able to pick up my Bible and read a word from you today. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, that I was able to spend time with the Holy Spirit today. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, because I was able to breathe in fresh air. That I was able to see with my eyes, hear with my ears, and speak in praise and worship with my mouth. So, Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for. Because, Father God, a lot of people today, God, didn't even wake up. A lot of people, Father God, is still in the hospital room in ICU and they're breathing on breathing machines. They're in critical condition, God, but God, we are so thankful, God, because you blessed us with our health and our strength today, God, that we're able to use our arms and our legs and our body parts. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for right now today, God, because our heart is still beating, God. Our blood is still flowing. Because of your grace and your mercy, God. So, God, I have a lot to be thankful for. So thankful, Jesus, that I'm able to fellowship with my sisters and my brothers on your YouTube channel right now today. Thank you, Jesus. I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, so we can continue to win souls for the kingdom. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, for the roof that you provided for our head, God, and for our family. Father God, there's a lot of people right now today, God, in this world, God, that's going on through this, this, this ice storm, Father God. You got a lot of people, Father God, that's in different parts of the world. We got people right here now today, Father God, in the United States, don't even have a roof over their head, God. So, God, we are thankful just for that. Father God, we are thankful, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared to put on that table. The clothing shoe that you put on that back. Father God, there's a lot of people, Father God, in the United States don't even have food. There's a lot of people, Father God, different parts of the world don't even have food to put on that table. Don't even have clothing shoes to put on their back. So God, when I say I have a lot to be thankful for, I'm thankful. Father God, we was thankful today, God, that you provided us to go back and forth to work today or even to go to church today. Even go back and forth to the grocery store, even run errands today. Father God, we are thankful, Father God, for the automobile that you bless us with, God. Father God, there's a lot of people today, God, was not even able to go to work today. Because during, during this pandemic, God, they're still sitting at home looking for a job. A lot of people, Father God, don't even have cars, Father God, but they're looking for a ride. Some are walking, God. But God, we are thankful for what you have done. We are thankful, Jesus, what you are doing. We're content for what we have, Jesus. So, Father God, I present my love letter to you right now today, Jesus, to let you know from the bottom of my heart, I can't speak for everybody else, but God, I can speak for myself to let you know how thankful, how grateful, how honored, and how blessed, and how moved I am, God. God, I have a lot to be thankful for. Thank you, Jesus, because you didn't have to do it. Thank you, Jesus, because you're still in control. You're still in charge. Thank you, Jesus, because you still have everything in the palm of your hand. Thank you, Jesus, because you already worked it out. Thank you, Jesus, because you already solved it. Thank you, Jesus, because it's already finished. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father God, I want to let you know I'm so thankful. And this is my love letter that I present to you because I have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you have a lot to be thankful for today, my sisters and brothers, present your love letter to Jesus right now and let him know how thankful you are. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now I'm here right now today on behalf of myself, my sisters, and my brothers. And I'm here right now today to repent of our sins 
Because, yes, we did drop the ball today. Yes, we even made some mistakes today. Yes, we even fell short of his grace and his mercy today. Every last one of us did. There's not one person on this planet called Earth can say that we are perfect because we're not. Even righteous. Not one. There's no need trying to hide it. There's no need trying to sugarcoat it. You know what you did before you did it. He knows what you did before you did it. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, who can you keep it real and be honest with? I'm just going to be real with you. Be honest with you. So I, want, I need some sisters right now. I need some brothers right now to keep it real right now, to be honest with, be honest with Jesus right now. And just confess and say, this is what I did today. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm here right now today to repent of my sins. Can you please join me right now? Lord Jesus, I'm asking your holy, precious, mighty name to please, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us right now. Wash us clean right now. Purify us through your blood right now. Clean us up as white as snow right now. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for washing us clean. Thank you, Father God, for purifying us. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a clean new slate. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a, a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for giving us an opportunity. You didn't have to do it, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing us out. Thank you, Jesus, for understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In your holy, precious, mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for an awesome and beautiful, blessed day today. I just can't thank the Father God for your words. I can't thank the Father God for your promises. I just can't thank the Father God for our help and our strength. I can't thank the Father God for your grace and your mercy. I just can't thank the Father God for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table. The clothes and shoes that you put on that back. I just can't thank the Father God for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I just can't thank the Father God for your love. I just can't thank the Father God for your faithfulness. I just can't thank the Father God because you're a man that you should not lie. That you stand on your words. That you stand on your promises. I just can't thank you, Father God, because your word tells us in Hebrews 13 verse 5 that you never leave us or forsake us. Glory to God. I just can't thank the Father God because you're an on-time God. You're a merciful God. You're a faithful God. You're a loving God. You're a kind God. You're a justice God. I just can't thank the Father God because you're always right there with us, God, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our trouble, and also in the midst of our storm. I just can't thank the Father God for who you are, what you have done, what you're about to do in our life. I just can't thank the Father God how things are turned around for us. I just can't thank the Father God for favor. I just can't thank the Father God how things about to start manifesting in our life. I just can't thank the Father God because we can always depend and rely on your name. I just can't thank the Father God because when we call on your name, call on your powerful, merciful name, Jesus, that you are always right there. I just can't think of Father God how you moving mountain on our behalf right now today. And we don't even see it or realize it. I just can't think of Father God for our blessing. I can't think of Father God for our breakthrough. I can't think of Father God for our anointing. I can't think of Father God for our deliverance. I just can't think of Father God for our double portion. I just can't think of Father God for our abundance. I just can't think of Father God for our more than enough. I just can't think of Father God for the connection in the rain. I just can't think of Father God for the open doors. I can't think of Father God for the closed doors. I just can't think of Father God because you about to put us at the right place at the right time. I just can't think of Father God because you say victory is ours today and we claim victory right now. I just can't think of Father God that we better meet our bow ass. I just can't thank the Father God 
because you are always right there. I just can't thank the Father God for the help. I just can't thank the Father God because you already gave us what our heart desire. Thank you, Jesus. I just can't thank the Father God because you about to open up the floodgates of heaven and that you about to pour a blessing on your daughters, a blessing on your sons, a blessing on LT, then we're going to be able to receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag. That's why I boast about you all day long. That's why I need you every day. That's why I depend on you every day. That's why I rely on you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now, right now, hallelujah, from the bottom of your heart, that you cannot thank him, that you cannot thank him enough. In Jesus' holy mighty name, amen and amen. I want to talk to my sisters and my brothers today. And it's time for my sisters. It's time for my brothers right now today. You know who you are. It's time for y'all to own up for y'all mistakes. It's, stop, it's time to stop playing the blame game. It is time to stop playing victim. It is time for y'all to see, you know what? I take full responsibility for my action. That was my fault why that went down. That was my bad. Why? That happened. A lot of you right now today, you're not telling Jesus that. You are telling Jesus, oh, so-and-so did this. Oh, so-and-so did that. And Jesus is saying, really? What did you do? What was your part into it? I know that your part was bigger and greater than the person who you are blaming. I know that your part is bigger and greater than who you are blaming. When are you going to man up about it? When are you going to woman up about it? I know some of y'all might not like this, but it's time to keep it real right now. It's time for y'all to be honest about the situation. That what happened with Adam and Eve. Adam blamed Eve, then Eve blamed Adam. Do you see that neither one of them took full responsibility for their action? Neither one of them said, Jesus, that was my bad. Neither one of them said, Jesus, that's my fault. Neither one of them repented right then and there for what they did. They blamed each other. They pointed fingers. But they never took responsibility, glory to God, for their actions. And how many of you right now today, that is exactly what you are doing. And right now, Jesus said, I'm tired of hearing that. I need somebody to man up about the situation. I need somebody to warm up about the situation so I can come in and do my part. How can I do something when you can't be man enough or warm enough and take full responsibility for what you did? It doesn't matter who was right or wrong. The part is that you took part of the situation. It don't matter if you had only 1% in it, you still took part of it. That means that you would still held responsibility for what you did. You got to say, that was my fault on that. I messed up. That was my bad. I messed up. There's a lot of parents right now today. It's time for y'all to take responsibility. You could have did a little better with your son. You could have did a little better with your daughter. 
But you want to blame your son and your daughter because they were acting up because they saw things on TV. Because you lied in the hand with a, a certain friend. No! You should have been the mother and the father. You should have laid down the house rules. You should have laid down the rod, like the Bible says so. But know what you kept doing. You kept giving them a pass. You was allowing them to do it. And then when the situation got out of hand, you want to blame the child for the problem. You want to blame the child for what he or she done. When you was more here responsibility than they was. Who the parent and who's the child? You know what was going on. You just played victim. It's time for y'all to take full responsibility and say, that was my fault. If I'd have been a better father, if I'd have been a better mother, maybe this right here would never happen this way. I take full responsibility for my action. That was my fault, Jesus. That was my bad, Jesus. You can blame me. I did all that. And it's time for y'all to man up. It's time for y'all to warm up about it. It's too many of you right now today you playing the blame game. Too many of you right now today you playing victim of something when you know that you took part of the situation in the first place. I'm guilty of it. And I had to confess. I had to man up about it and say, gee, that was my fault. That was my bad. There's a lot of things I should have did, but I didn't do it. I saw it right there in front of my eyes. I saw it right there in front of my face, but I just let it keep going on and say, oh, it's going to get better. Or I kept saying it's going to work out. I was deceiving myself, and I knew what I should have done as the man of the house, but I didn't do it. It's a lot of men out here right now today. A lot of brothers right here today. How many of you can say that you pray for your wife or your girlfriend or your fiance on a daily basis? And I keep it real, because I didn't. Then we get mad. You start playing a blame game and say, oh, this happened because of this. Oh, this happened because of that. Oh, she allowed the enemy to come in. No, we allow the enemy to come in because we'd have been doing our job as a man. Been praying for our wives, praying for our girlfriends, praying for our fiancés and started arguing with them and fussing and fighting with them. Well, the enemy would never came in to blind them and do what he did. We let the enemy in. That was our fault. That was our bad. I take full responsibility of that because I was wrong at it. I'm man enough to let you know I did it. I ain't going to sit there and play the blame game like Adam and Eve. I ain't going to sit there and point fingers like I ain't have a big part of it. I was 95.5% wrong at that. I allowed that to happen. When I should have stopped it right then and there. I saw what was going on. I was aware of what was going on. But I ain't do nothing about it until it got bad. I ain't do anything about it until it got worse. Until it was all broken. All tore up. All hell went to chaos. I said, what did I do now? And I had to sit there and think about it for quite some time. And the whole time I was thinking about it, I still never took responsibility for my actions. I never confessed to Jesus and let Jesus know that it was my fault, my bad, until yesterday. I said, Jesus, I know you've been waiting for me to hear this. I know you've been waiting on me to tell you this. But Jesus, I take full responsibility for my action. That was my fault. What happened? That was my bad. I should have been more careful. I should have been more aware. I should have been able to handle my own house. I was not able to handle my own house, but I was sitting there able to handle somebody's own house and help them. But I couldn't even handle and manage my own place while I paid rent at. I allowed the enemy to come in and do what he do. I did that. There's a lot of women right here today, too, who've done the same thing. How many women right now today? Be honest with yourself. Don't sit there and lie. That you pray for your children every night. That you pray for your husband every day, that you even pray for your boyfriend, your fiance every day. Keep it real now. How many of y'all pray for them? How many of y'all lay your hands on them? Then the moment when things start going sour, you say, oh, he messing around. Oh, he doing this. He doing that. You allowed that to happen because you didn't protect your own house. 
Proverbs 14 says, a, a, a wise woman know how to build her house, but the foolish woman know how to tear it down. The foolish one who don't pray. The foolish one, the foolish one say, okay, we, we don't need to read the Bible today. We don't need to pray today. We'll skip. We get to when we get to it. But the wise woman gonna say, no matter what, before we go to bed, we're gonna pray. The wise woman say, before we go to bed, we're gonna read this Bible. The wise woman gonna say, we're not gonna watch this on TV, but we're gonna sit there, we're gonna spend time with the Lord. How many wise women was doing that? But no, you too busy being like being like Eve, playing the blame game, playing the victim. When it's time for you to warm up and say, you know what? I take full responsibility for my action. That was my bad when my children got out of hand. That was my bad what happened to my husband, why he did this. That was my fault. I knew better. I was raised better. I was taught better. I know I'm a better woman than this. I just thought if I was doing this and doing that, then everything's going to be okay. No. We allow certain things to happen right up under our nose. We did that, my sisters. We did that, my brothers. And God is wanting to hear you right now today to confess and say, I take full responsibility. If you can't take full responsibility for what you've done and for your action, how you expect Jesus to do something and move in your life? When you're still holding on and you're still playing victim, but you're still playing blame games too. And say, oh, it's his fault. Oh, it's our fault. No, it was your fault. It's like it was my fault. I can be man enough about it and say it. I can keep it real and be honest and say it was my fault because it was. It was certain people I should have never allowed in my house when I knew they were not no good and I knew their spirit wasn't right. I allowed that. You allowed that, my sisters. You allowed that, my brothers. You know that girl wasn't right. You let that girl in your house in the first place. No one get what she had her eyes on your man. You know that other little boy was no good. You know he was mannish. But you allowed that little boy and that little girl in your house to brainwash your own son and your daughter. You know that brother wasn't right, my brother. You know he wasn't coming to see you. He was coming to see your wife. He was coming to see your lady. He was pretending like he was watching a football game. He was pretending like he watched a basketball game. He was pretending like he was coming to see you. But he had his eyes on something else. You was to blame. You allowed certain family members to come to your house to destroy your marriage. You was to blame. Take full responsibility. Take action. Let Jesus know right now today, say, that was my fault. That was my bad. I allowed that to happen. I should have stopped him from day one. But what we do, we allow the things to acute over and over and over again. They built so much, we built a twin, a twin tower right there in front of our face. Then when everything went down south, we played victim. We point the finger at one another. But right then and there, we never took responsibility. I had to confess and take full responsibility for my action. I said, Jesus, I was wrong 95.5% of what happened with me in my house. Me, not her, me. That was all me, Jesus. You made me the head, you made me the head but I was acting like I was, the, I was the tail. That was me. That's a lot of stuff I should have stopped. A lot of stuff I should have corrected. A lot of stuff I should have said, you ain't welcome to my house with those spirits on you. I welcome those spirits in the house to attack the people in my house. I allowed that. I should have been the one attacking her, but I allowed the enemy to come in and attack her when I should have been doing it because it was my fault. I knew better. I sensed it. But I just let it go. I kept sweeping up under the rug. Then realized I was allowing the enemy to come in to steal, kill, and destroy what was in my house. I take full responsibility of that. And I asked God, I said, God, to give me a second chance to make it better, to make it right. I promise you, it won't happen again. But one thing I also knew, that God never gave me his house. 
He never gave me the keys to his house. He never gave me the lease to sign to go in this house. And like I got saying, God, I'm doing everything right. I know I'm, I'm doing what you call and chose me to do. But God says, you, ain't, you can't even manage your own house. Your own house is not in order. Your own house is a mess. It's a wreck. You can't even see it. Do you think I'm going to give you the keys to my house? Do you think I'm going to give you the lease so you can sign and bring that same mess in my house? LT, there's no way I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do it. What kind of father I am going to give you the keys to my house? I'm going to let you sign the lease to my house when your own house is a mess. It's not in order and it's also a wreck. And the second thing, you ain't taking full responsibility for your action. And a lot of you right now today, you realize why God has not opened that door for you. It's because your own house is not lined up. Your own house is not in order. Your own house is a mess. You don't even realize what you are doing in your own crib. You are arguing and fighting, but you don't know how to fight. You fight with prayer, but we fight with one another. Husband against wife, wife against husband, wife and husband against the children, the children against the against, against the mother and the father. You allow certain people in your house when you know they ain't no good. You allow certain people in your house, you know their spirits is, is a hot mess. Look what you're allowing, what you are bringing to your house. Mess. Chaos. Do you think God is going to give you his house? And that's what you are bringing to your house? He ain't going to do that. Some of y'all been waiting for that lease agreement for a long time. You've been waiting for them keys for a long time. You say, God, where the keys at? Where the lease agreement at? I should have been signed the deal. He said, huh, not in this house, you not. Because until you get your house right, I'm not going to give you the keys to my house. Until you get your house right, we ain't signing no agreement. We ain't signing no paperwork. And we ain't signing no deal. Stop playing the blame game. It is time for you right now today, my sisters. It is time for you right now today, my brothers, to man up and warm it up and take full responsibility for your actions and say, that's my bad, that's my fault. How I know, I'm glad you asked me. Can you please turn your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and we're going to read verses 4 and 5. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and we're going to read verses 4 through 5. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. He must manage his own family well and see that his what? His children obey him. A lot of the children right now today don't even obey their own mother and father right now. So how you expect Jesus to give you the keys to his house when your kids don't obey you? How you expect Jesus to sign a deal and give you a lease agreement when your kids does not even obey you? Or show you any type of respect. Your house is a wreck. Your house is a mess. Your house is turned upside down. And you think God is going to give you the keys to his house? Oh no. Do you think Jesus is going to sign you a deal to that brand new mansion? I don't think so. He's not going to do it. He's going to hold those keys. He's going to hold that lease agreement. And he's going to hold that deal. Until you take full responsibility and get your house in order right now today. Mother and father. Parents. Your kids running you instead of you running the kids. Your kids tell you what to do instead of you telling your kids what to do. Your kids don't even fear you. They talk back to you. And you sit there and take it like it's okay. And you know what I'm talking about. Obey him or prosper. Respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? Now, how many of you right now that they can take care of your own house and your own family? Now, just be honest now, because if you arguing and fighting every other day, there's no way that you are taking care and manage your own house. If you can't sit there and fight with prayer, if you can't pray for your wife or your husband every day, you are not managing your own house. If you can't pray for your children and keep them in line, you are not managing your own house. And it's time for y'all to stop playing the blame game. Too many of you right now today, you're playing Adam and Eve. You're pointing the finger. Man up about it and say, that was my fault, Jesus. 
I knew better. See, that was my bad. That was my fault. Some, some got out of control in my house. But I promise you, Jesus, if you give me a second chance at this, I promise you I will get my house in order. I promise you, Jesus, it's not going to go down like that no more. But Father God, I'm coming to you as a man. Father God, I'm coming to you as a woman to let you know I take full responsibility for what went down in my house. I take full responsibility for my actions. I'm not going to blame my husband for this. I'm not going to blame my wife for this. I'm not going to blame my children. I'm not going to blame the people I let in my house like that. I'm going to take the action for it. I'm going to take the fault for it. Because that was me. That was my responsibility. And I take full action for it too. So God, you want to punish me? You punish me. Don't punish them. I know what I should have done. But Father God, I'm here today to tell you right now. I'm here to confess to you right now today. I will get my house in order. I will get my children in line. I will not allow certain people in my house no more. If I know their spirit ain't right, they are not welcome in my house. I don't care who it is or who they some kin to. I don't care if it's family members. I don't care if it's in-laws. I don't care if it's people that we, we grew up together. I don't care. In this house, we're going to serve the Lord. If you're not willing to serve the Lord, you're not welcome in my house. You can take it how you want to take it. You can feel how you want to feel. But I'm here today to tell you right now today, and you know who you are. It's time for y'all to man up and woman up about the situation right now. You wonder why God has not gave you the keys yet. That's why. You wonder why you ain't signed the deal yet. That's why. You wonder why you ain't signed the lease agreement yet. That's why. Why would God give you his house when you can't even manage and keep control of your own house? Who I'm talking to right now? Who Jesus is preaching to right now today? Do you take full responsibility for your action today, my brothers? Do you take full responsibility for your action today, my sisters? Because like I said, Proverbs 14, a wise woman, she built her house. How does she build her house? By preaching and serving the Lord, by fearing God, by all on her knees praying with her husband and her children every day, all day. That's a man's job to protect his house, protect his woman, to always make sure that she is safe and secure. How many brothers right now, how many real men pray for their children every day? How many real men pray for their wife every day? Come on now. Keep it real. Be honest. How many of you right now today? I mean every single day. Y'all kneel down before the throne every day. Either beside the bed or you're in your prayer closet. How many of y'all do it? How many? Take full responsibility for your action. Today is the day you got to confess and let Jesus know that was my bad. That was my fault. I take full responsibility for my action. Ask Jesus to give you a second chance. Ask Jesus to get you another opportunity. And get your house in order. For God can give you his house. Because he want to give you the house. But he can't give it to you. Unless your own house is straight with him. Amen. Amen. And if this word is for you. You know it's for you. Give God some thanks and praise and glory. In the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus no matter what. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my sisters and brothers. The only thing I ask y'all guys to do for me, continue to keep me in prayer. And keep me lifted up too. This serving ministry LT. 
I love y'all. In Jesus' holy mighty name, God bless you. Amen.